Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I'll be testing out some Sega Saturn emulation on the Rock Pro 64 single board computer. And I'm also going to show a quick preview of the upcoming Retro Arena beta image for the Rock Pro 64 and the Rochambeau Retro Gaming Case. Here are some of the specs for the Rock Pro 64 single board computer. It has a Rockchip RK3399 hexacore CPU with speeds around 2 GHz and a Mali T860 quad core GPU and it's available in either a 2 GB or 4 GB RAM model. And this is capable of emulating a bunch of different systems ranging from the 8-bit Atari 2600 all the way to the 128-bit Sega Dreamcast and most of the systems in between as well such as Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, and much more. And for a case for my Rock Pro 64, I'm using the Rochambeau Retro Gaming Case. And this is a pretty cool little case. It's got front USB ports, it's got a USB-C port on the back, a functional power button and reset button, and even an eject button for a functional SSD cartridge. And the looks of this case are heavily inspired by the original Super Famicom, which is one of my favorite looking consoles. And for an operating system, I'm using the Retro Arena Rock Pro Beta Preview. And this will be available to the public here in the near future, but they're still working on a few things here and there to try to get this image running as good as possible. And so far, everything looks great. There's a ton of features to play with, and more than enough emulators built in to keep your retro gaming addiction tamed. There's even a desktop you can play with where you can access the web and many other features. The Retro Arena image also has support for the Rochambeau case to make all your ports and buttons functional. And if you like to customize things like myself, there's quite a few options you can play with, such as themes, music, and splash screens. It also has a bunch of ports that are built in and ready to play, like Doom, Descent, Doot Nukem, and more. Inside the Retro Hub, you can find some of your favorite YouTubers out there, such as ETA Prime, GameSack, Classic Gaming Quarterly, and many other awesome YouTubers out there. And you are able to access their content by scanning these barcodes with your smartphone or a similar smart device. Now it's time for some emulation testing, and I wanted to test out some Sega Saturn because it's one of the hardest systems to emulate. And most single board computers cannot handle Saturn emulation very well. But with the Rock Pro 64, there are some Sega Saturn games I would consider very playable. So let's get started off with some Sonic Jam. To access some of the emulator features, when you load a game, you can quickly tap the A button. From in here, you can select which emulator you want to use. The default Saturn emulator is the LibRetro Yaba Shinshiro, which gives you RetroArch support, which is cool, but if you're looking for the best Sega Saturn emulation performance, you will want to use a standalone Yaba Saturn emulator, which is also the Yaba Shinshiro, just without RetroArch support. And with the standalone emulator, you can choose different resolutions, with 1x being the lowest resolution and 4x and 720 being the highest resolutions. So we'll start off with the 1x resolution and show you examples of all of these in order. And I am using a region-free BIOS for all my Sega Saturn testing and it seems to be working well. Here is Sonic Jam with the 1x resolution. And it doesn't look too bad, it is a little bit of pixelated, but it looks okay. Now let's check it out with the 2x resolution. And I think it looks quite a bit better with this resolution. You got a lot sharper lines on Sonic there. He doesn't look near as pixelated. Now let's try the 4x resolution. And with this resolution, he almost looks too good, if that makes any sense. This character was originally designed to be somewhat pixelated looking because it would have been on a low resolution TV. So when it's this high resolution, it kind of looks weird. And here's the 720p resolution, and it's very similar to the 4x resolution. Now this game is playable with the higher resolutions, but it is a little bit slower. If you want the best performance with any of the games, you're going to want to use the 1x resolution. But with some of your games, like 2D games that aren't demanding, like Mortal Kombat or Mega Man or Gex, those games can run in the higher resolution, and I would consider those games very playable, and they can play very close to full speed. Now here's Sonic Jam back in the 1x resolution, and it does play a little bit smoother, it's not near as choppy, and you do have to have frame skip enabled on this game. If you don't have the frame skip enabled, this game is not very playable. 
There is an in-game emulator menu that you can access on your controller by pushing the select button. And from inside this menu, you can do a couple different things. We can map new controllers, we can save states, load states, display frames per second, and a few other things. But I did find out anytime I access that menu inside the game and then exit it, that it starts to flicker on the left of the screen there, and I can't get that to stop unless I reset the game. Now this is something that will get corrected in the future, but it is a little bit annoying to me, but after a while I get used to it. And one other thing I'd like to mention with this game is that it is playable in the Sonic World mode, but when I try to play the older games like the Sonic 1, 2, and 3, it doesn't work properly, it starts to glitch out, so it's only playable in the Sonic World mode. Now let's try out some Bug 2, which was a Sega Saturn exclusive back in the day. And I consider this game playable. It is a little slow at times and can be glitchy. Some of your cutscenes might cut out a little bit, but overall I'd say it's playable. Now I am playing this in 1x resolution. If I try to play this in the 4x resolution, it doesn't do as good. And that's going to be the same for a lot of your more demanding games out there, like I mentioned earlier. And I've mentioned this in a lot of my other videos, Sega Saturn emulation still has a long ways to come. The emulation for Sega Saturn on any device is far from perfect. There is a lot of games that have become playable, but there's just some games that are just not compatible with the Sega Saturn emulators that are out there today. So if you're expecting close to perfect emulation for Sega Saturn, it just doesn't exist yet. But with that being said, the Sega Saturn emulation scene has come a long ways in the last couple of years, and I'm very excited to see it continue to improve. Now let's try out some Panzer Dragoon 2. And I'm playing this in 2x resolution, and it's doing fairly well. In 1x resolution it does do a little bit better, but I would consider it playable in the 2x resolution. And as far as the frames per second goes, it really varies between the different games. This game in particular probably runs anywhere from 30 frames per second to 45 frames per second then you have your frame skip enabled on top of that. So the frames per second really isn't that high. So it does make the gameplay a little bit choppy, but it's still playable. Now let's try out some Mr. Bones, which is another Sega Saturn exclusive back in the day. And this is one of my favorite games. It's so unique. You do all kinds of things. And what you're trying to do is keep all your bones. These guys will try to chase you and hit you with things and make your bones disappear. And you try to regain those bones back. Then in other rounds, you're gonna be doing something completely different like playing instruments like the guitar or the drums. So this game is all over the place and I like it. As far as the emulation goes, I'd say it's pretty decent. But if I try to play this in the higher resolutions like 2X or 4X, it doesn't do so great, so I do have to play this in the 1x resolution. Here's Mortal Kombat Trilogy. And this is one of the games I would say that's not a very demanding game, so I am able to play this in the 4x resolution, and the frames per second is very high. It's not really skipping any frames, and maintaining that 60 frames per second pretty much the whole time. And here is Virtua Racing, and I am playing this in the 4X resolution. And I would say this is playable, but it does have some audio issues. Mainly the music, when that starts playing, it starts getting kind of glitchy sounding and stuttering. But as soon as that music stops, it seems to be playing okay, and I don't hear no more audio issues. So it seems to be related to the music track only. And when I played this in the 1X resolution, it had the same results.
Here's Gex, and this is another game just like Mortal Kombat Trilogy that I can play in the 4X resolution with pretty much full speed the whole time. I remember playing this game back when I was a teenager for the first time and that was on the Sega Saturn. And I got addicted. I remember playing this game all the way to finish and I had a lot of fun doing it. I'm not yet back. Here is the amazing Hulk, and the game seemed to be playing pretty good, but then I started to move vertically on the screen, and it started to glitch out like crazy. So it's gonna happen here in just a few. So when I start to move vertically up in the game, I get this, I started getting all kinds of glitches happening. But then if I come back down to the bottom of the screen here, then I can see my character again. So I would say this game is not playable. Here's Sega Rally, and it's not doing so great. I mean, it's barely playable. The frames per second is pretty low, and you can hear that audio stuttering. So at this point, I don't think you can have a very enjoyable experience if you're trying to play Sega Rally with this setup. Batman Forever, and this game didn't really get good reviews back in the day, but I actually kind of like this game. It's fun to play. It's just kind of a beat em up game. You get little power ups. Batman becomes mini sometimes. I find that very entertaining. So I don't have a problem with this game. And on top of that, I'd say this game plays very well. It plays very close to full speed. And I can play this in the 4X resolution. Here's Offworld Interceptor, and the first time I played this game back in the day was on the Sega Saturn. I know this was released on other platforms, but I did prefer the Sega Saturn version. And so far everything looks good, it looks like it's going to work fine, but unfortunately when I start to play the game, it starts to do this. It starts to mix in the menu screen with the gameplay, making the game not playable. It's very odd, because the game seems like it would be playable if this glitch wasn't happening, because the speed seems to be just fine. Okay, that's enough of that. Here's Doom, and unfortunately it's not playable either. Unless you want to play very, very slow. And this brings me back to what I was talking about earlier, that Sega Saturn emulation still has a long ways to go. There's just a lot of games that just don't work properly with the Sega Saturn emulators. Here's Burning Rangers. And it's almost playable, but not quite. It's got some pretty bad audio issues. And parts of the game like this where there's not much going on, it's playable. But when you get to the parts where there's music playing or a lot of talking or even cutscenes happening, the audio starts stuttering like crazy. You should be able to look around corners by pressing the L and R buttons. Okay, next exercise. Show, show, say hello, say hello, Glenn. Okay, it is time for me to get out of here. If you like this video, if you could, hit that like button and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time. to the leader in sports entertainment for over 50 years. Belly to back suplex. Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog.